Hey everyone, it's Teresa and today I've got a really fun video. It is all about plaid and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I'm starting off with this project. Uh, I did one this back in Christmas time, obviously, and I'm going to revamp it. I first clipped off or like, you know, just flicked off all of those little beads on the bottom. They didn't stay very well. So I was just, you know, clipped them all off basically. And I'm going to take some decoupage paper. This one is from Roy, Roy cycled, Roy cy ah. anyways, I'll list it for you below and it's in the pattern. It's called natural history. This one is one that I bought from my good friend, Kimberly over at my Victorian heart. I'll have her little shop listed for you below in case you want to check her out. She's out of like St. Augustine. She's super, super sweet. Uh, so I trimmed off a good amount of it so that I had a little, it was a little easier for me to work with. And then I'm like, you know, I'm dead set on getting that little bee and the flowers in there. So I went through and kind of just pressed it in to get like the basic shape, kind of like I'm doing now, but I did it on a much wider scale so that I had enough space to kind of trim down. So now I'm doing that again, just so I can get a pretty clear indication of where I need to trim. And uh, my advice on this is still to trim on the wider side, just so it's a little easier when you're about to do this next step. I'm gonna take some Mod Podge, and this is in the matte color, and we're just going to start Pl pl you know, basically plopping that thing down on the bottom of this tray. If you're screaming in the background, I'm sorry, the kids are a little wild. They are on their last day of spring break <laughs> and it's uh, a nice early Sunday morning. I thought maybe they would, you know, relax a little bit, but no, no, of course not. Of course not. Anyways, I am just starting to kind of smooth it out. And what I do is I'll do this Mod Podge in sections and I could not get that like last little bit of the rim on the right spot. And I thought like, well, if I smooth it around a little bit, it'll do better. That is why I'm saying, make sure you leave yourself a little bit of extra paper around the edges because we're going to trim it off. And you'll see in a second, it really, this, all of this really doesn't end up mattering too much because I do tear it a little, but I don't mind it. I kind of like the more rustic-y kind of look. Um, just you, if you've been here a little while, you know that that is kind of more of my style, I should say. So once I get it into a spot that I determine is good enough, I'm going to add some more Mod Podge and then we'll start to really get this back into the spot that it needs to be. And I just cover the whole thing. And that is like a makeup brush I'm using. <laughs> I don't know. I must have bought it from the Dollar Tree, making the determination that it was going to be a good brush for things like Mod Podge or paint or something. Once I've gotten it all smoothed down, I'm going to go into it with, yep, you guessed it, some antique wax. I'm going to try not to go crazy with it, but there's definitely a few spots that end up a little bit more on the heavy side, but y'all will forgive me because you know, the antique wax is just something I kind of like. Uh, I'm going heavier on the outside parts of it and I'll bring it in a little bit throughout the actual print just because it looks kind of funny not to have at least a little bit in there. And then I'm going to go around the rim and around the inside part and the outside part of this tray. Again, we're going to call it a tray. Um, I asked, I think, and somebody was like, I bet you it was like a cheese wheel or something. I don't know what it originally was. I'll list the original video down below. If I remember, <laughs> uh, when I did this project as the Christmassy one, I kind of like this more almost every day ish. Obviously it leans in the spring direction, but you can leave this out any time of year, at least in Florida. It's always <laughs> feels warm. There's very few months that we have that are actually cold. So I am, like I said, going through all of these spots. Now, if I end up doing anything that's too heavy, I'd just take a little bit of that same milk jug paint. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of this ribbon. Actually, it's not quite the whole spool. So if you're doing a project like this, just kind of be mindful of how much you need. But I'm going to take some hot glue and go all around the, rim, the bottom rim of this to cover up that gap. That's where I had those little half beads before. And this is just kind of like the perfect way in my mind to bring it all together. And at first, the reason why you see some of the dark wood underneath it, I actually had started off by putting a like faux leather ribbon on there and I liked it but it just didn't feel right trying to go for this more French country look. This felt way better as far as going with like the overall feeling of these projects. So 
I will then do my last little bit here on the edge of this ribbon and I'm just gonna fold it over. You could definitely cut it to where it matches it up as close as you can and you know try to get it really nice and smooth but I end up just folding it over just so it is a really nice edge and once I have gotten that all in there and being careful not to burn the heck out of my finger, <laughs> I'll be done with this project and then we will see how it looks here in there right now. Here we go. <laughs> and it turned out really pretty. I love it. I think it's very, very shabby chic, very French country. So today, as I said, is a part of this plaid collaboration. We're all in a playlist together. And don't forget to comment uh, a secret word I will mention here momentarily, maybe you have to keep watching to find out to be entered in to win some plaid products. All right, now on to our next one. I have this, this container. It is from the Dollar Tree. And I actually painted this months ago. So um, it is an applied product. This is actually Rust-Oleum from sh uh, the color Chiffon Cream. However, Milk Jug is also another good color that you could use. I'm going to take one of these IOD transfers and I'm going to just use this to kind of bring it into that, again, French country, shabby chic, you know, that kind of thing. And I think that it's going to work out just fine. Uh, I am using some plaid products to hold my container in place. Um, but what I did before I apply my uh, transfer here, I did spray it down with a little bit of a clear kind of sealing spray and let it set. Uh, I did it overnight. It wasn't really necessary. It's just the way it ended up. Uh, just make sure you're paying attention to how long it has to sit on there before it's considered dry. And then I am doing, as you would imagine, rubbing that transfer on to the surface. This one is working out way better than it has for me in the past. I don't know. I've had hard times with certain ones of these. I think the harder the surface, the better it is. If it's like a wood surface and it's, you know, softer, you're going to potentially run the risk of getting some of that rub on transfer like pressure spots. I don't know. I'm taking then the little sheet that it was on and just going over it really quick just to make sure that there aren't little pieces sticking up or anything like that. And then, uh, yeah, you guessed it, some wax. <laughs> some of the Folk Art Antique Wax, which is our secret word. Make sure that in your comment on this video, you use the words wax just it just could be any kind of wax just wax in general just make sure you're using that word so that i know you want to get entered in to our little gift away and don't forget uh like i said before check out all the videos on the playlist that should be the basic rule of it is you have to go through and check out all the videos and find their secret word that they are using on their video it will more than likely be different uh maybe some people have the same thing you never know I, there could be some antique wax lovers out there like me because what's not to love right um so just make sure you check out their videos for their their secret words and here's how it turned out. It is, it is so pretty with a little bit of that pop of color from the lavender. I think that it is absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm going to take you for a little blast from the past from a couple of projects. Uh, this one was, I just did a quick coat of the wood tint in the color gray. And I'm using a Chocotour transfer. I believe this is one of the first projects I made. But it turned out so pretty. I had to show it to you again. So I did fuzz it and now I am just going to line it up. Now, most of the transfers that they have are not, a lot of them are not made like perfectly straight lines. They're kind of got like this one. It's got a little bit of a curve to it so that it's so much easier and, to actually like place it. So I'm going to take a few different colors. This one here is in the color eucalyptus and I'm going to use that on all of our little green pieces with a mini squeegee just so we can kind of work color by color of what we're going to put in there. I'm going to use a little bit finer of a tipped uh, tool. That is called a multi-tool. And if you don't have one or you don't want to buy one or whatever, all you have to really do is cut one of your mini squeegees in half and it's about the same size. And so then you have two of them and that's less cleaning. Who doesn't love <laughs> less cleaning? I love less cleaning. Anyways, well, obviously it's still cleaning the same amount of 
you know, items or potentially more, but you have to do it less often, which is really the goal here. Now this one is the color berry. It's just a really pretty like purpley pink color. So it's just, like I said, a little pop of color. It's just really a fun transfer. And this one looks super pretty, super classic in just white or black as well. It's, I just love this particular saying. So I will then, like I said, go through and add in all of these different colors. Now, if you're doing something like this and you are concerned about it drying because it will do that potentially it can dry on the screen and so what I'm doing here is I'm actually lifting it up and then I will place it back down and that is doing is to keep it from drying in the screen that I believe when I did this project the first time that was my first problem um, but once it is completely done and uh, preferably dry I'm going to take these little details I want to say I got them from like Hobby Lobby and I'm going to add them on to the corners of this gorgeous little piece. And I'm using some wood glue. I thought that that would probably hold better than the hot glue because these are metal. And I think it just adds a little something to the project. You know what I mean? It just adds just a little touch of class and elegance. And obviously this isn't in French, but you get the basic idea. I think it still kind of stays in that like French country look to it. Anyways. You have to let me know what you think of this one, if you like it, if you think it is super pretty and sort of is still in the French direction. I think so. And somehow magically I did not use any um, antique wax on this one, but don't forget that's your word for this video. And on to our next one. Again, it is a, I don't even know what to call it. A re, it's not really a remix. It's the same project. It was the first time I showed it to you, but I did a full coat of the color plaster from Waverly and now I am going to add in a little bit of well not a little bit a lot of it of hot glue and I'm just going to press this little sign right on there that one is directly from Dollar Tree I did nothing to it um it was kind of perfect the way it was and then I'll go in with some Mod Podge and add some decoupage paper to the sides now this is going to get a little complicated here in a second the just adding it to the sides would have been enough however I was like well you know what you can still see the back side of the sign if you see the back of the project I couldn't have that so I'll show you what I do here in a minute it worked out but I took I took the hard route I think <laughs> I think I took the harder route to do it but these little birds are super precious super pretty for spring for sure now I'll just trim off all of the excess you could totally wait to do this and use a sanding block um, once it's dry, that is an option as well. It just kind of depends on your preference. I don't know why I wanted to do it when it was wet still, but apparently I did. So I'll Mod Podge down all of the little excess pieces. One thing that's nice, at least with this being on the bottom, you can't really see those little pieces that are hanging out there. So I'm not worried about them. Maybe that's why I did it when it was still wet. And then I'll add some Mod Podge on the top just to keep it nice and not have to worry about this, you know, getting all messed up because this decoupage paper is like tissue paper thin, super, super thin. Well, now that I've added the Mod Podge to that and I've got my side pieces looking so cute. See, I did both sides. And now I was like, you know what? I'm going to add my you know, floral foam and I do end up adding in some moss. And I knew that was the plan to add moss. So we are then going to go ahead and start figuring out a way to keep all of that moss from getting absolutely everywhere. So what I do is I take some of that same type of the decoupage paper and I'm going to just start putting it in where those little spots that are open are. Like on the front side, obviously you can see it. So there's the sign you can see, and then I'm gonna add these little pieces on either side of it. What's really nice is since it's kind of like the, the paper itself has stuff like all over the place, if you don't get it in a very specific place, it's not a big deal. It is going to be just fine. And then I'm gonna do that to the back side as well. You can see I also added a little bit of paper on the bottom so that you don't have this moss going everywhere because that is exactly what it does. It goes absolutely everywhere. So I'll put in my floral moss just to give it that really cute kind of springy look to it. And once that is the case, once I've gotten all the moss in there, I'm going to start adding in all of my little florals. And here's how it turns out. It's just as pretty as it could be. You know what I mean? 
So I have this little jug. This is also another project from a previous video. However, this one is kind of a remix. I am going to do something a little different with it here, at the, here in a moment. I'll first take some antique wax again. Who doesn't love it, right? It doesn't stick very well. So if I were to do this over, I would probably give it a quick little spritz with some matte spray paint, just clear matte spray paint would do the trick just fine if you wanted to have like your antique wax adhere a little bit easier. And uh, it's neither here nor there. It ends up working out okay. Um, but then I kind of started wiping it down. I'm like, yeah, I'm not real sure how I feel about that. So anyways, we're going to move on to making this little mold. I'm going to take this clay with an IOD stamp. You can use all of their IOD products as uh, for stamping as well as, uh, or, you know, in the clay as well as using it for like the ink and stuff. So I will roll out my clay nice and flat. And then I messed it up apparently. So I will re-roll out my clay. <laughs> and I, I don't know guys, it's been a while since I did this project, but that's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna flip it over and use the other side because that's gonna be a little bit flatter. And I'm gonna apply just a little bit of cornstarch so that it has, you know, doesn't really stick too much to it. And then I'm taking my makeshift rolling pin that is actually from like a roll of paper. <laughs> Then I'm going to cut it out using this little tool from the Dollar Tree. It's a little poker tool. It's not even like it's a craft knife. I'm not sure, guys. I don't know where this was all coming from. But I use that, and it does give me a little bit of a jaggedy edge, but that's pretty much okay. I mean, you can always sand them down. Sometimes I look cool with that jaggedy edge. It just depends on you. And it would have worked out a little bit better had I used my uh, craft knife as opposed to this tool. I don't know. I've learned a lot since then. I think I had actually just started using these, using the clay and using things like that. And I could have put like a little bit of cornstarch underneath the mold as well, underneath the, the clay piece, just so it wouldn't have stretched at all when you pick it up. Anyways, I will put it over my little milk jug because that is what's going to help kind of form it up. And I'm just patting along the sides just to kind of get it nice and flat. And once that's done, it'll be nice and it'll be dry. And then I painted it and used some rusting technique. I'll link the video for you down below if you want to check out the whole process. It's a whole process to make the rusting um, co like compound. I don't know what to call it. It's kind of sciencey, um, but I do take some hot glue and glue it down. Now here it is, present day. Um, we did a little time travel. I'm going to take some moss colored chalk paint and I'm going to give it a, a I don't want to call it a full coat because I am trying to avoid at least some of the spots with the rust. And then eventually I'm like, you know what? I am probably getting technically getting like rust bits inside my paint. So I'm just going to plop a nice little hefty amount on a piece of scrap. It's not paper. That's from the, the transfer. So it's got a little glossiness. Once I've gotten my little coat of the moss colored paint, I'm going to go into, you guessed it, antique wax and going to give it a little bit more age all around. You can still see some of the rust bits uh, so it still gives it that rusted look. It's just toned down a little bit and it gives it just a different look, you know. Uh, I think I like the blue better though, to be really honest. But here it is all finished up with the little updated color. So and it's got, of course, the lavender in there to give it that nice farmhouse look, uh, you know, French country farmhouse kind of thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to check out the playlist and comment below the secret word. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back in the video and check out the rest. And I will see you next time.